Hi students, Professor Tierney here. Just want to do a quick video for the table that was left out of our notes yesterday due to the class cancellation. As a little bit of a review, we're talking about the labor demand. And we have a couple of assumptions here that we had in our notes that workers are all the same, wages are set in a competitive market, and that firms maximize profits, which led us into the question of how do firms maximize profits? Well, in your micro class, you might have heard a lot of things about marginal revenue equals marginal cost because you're trying to decide on how many things to produce. In this case, we're actually trying to make a decision on how many people to hire. But the same exact base decision needs to be made. We need to continue to do an activity as long as the marginal benefit is greater than or equal to the marginal cost. And in class, we just needed to define what that cost and benefit was. The cost was the nominal wage, which we're going to represent as a capital W. The benefit is the value of the additional production. Now, we've previously defined the marginal product of labor. That MPL is how many additional goods or services or production is going to be made by this worker. And we want to get the value of that to get it into monetary terms. And so we multiply that by P, which will then get us MRPL or marginal revenue product of labor. In your notes that'll be posted, it'll say, hey, we're gonna do an example, but that's gonna be posted on YouTube, which is what this video is gonna be. So let's go ahead and do this example. This is gonna be a very simple example that just uses a table to show how you calculate the MRPL. In this case, it's gonna be our marginal benefit. So I'm going to list how many workers what the output's gonna be for those workers. We can then calculate the marginal product of labor, which we know is how is my output changing if I change the number of workers that I hire. And then we are going to put MRPL, which is just the MPL multiplied by the price. So let's go ahead and just create some data here, which I'll just pull out of thin air. Let's say there's zero workers, one, two, three, four, and five workers. And let's just say that the output 0, 5, 15, 23, 30, and 32. Now these numbers I did not get from uh, an equation, although a lot of times in class you will have a production function that will relate these two uh, things. All I did here is make sure that I see uh, some sort of diminishing uh, marginal returns to my labor. MPL, in this case, the first one is nothing. Then I go 5, 10, 8, 7, and 2. And the way we found that is just by looking at how output's changing per each labor. So my change in output over my change in the number of workers. You can see at first we may have some increasing returns. That might make sense. Let's say this is in a, a Starbucks and the first person you hire has to do a ton of stuff. They can't really specialize. Now the second one, they can specialize in things. So you might actually see some increasing marginal returns. Usually in the models that we're going to have in this class, we're only going to see the decreasing marginal returns. The next thing we want to do is my MRPL. But the only way we can do that is if we have the price of this product. Let's just go ahead and say the price, to make this simple, the price is $10. If that means the price is $10, again, you can't have anything for zero. I guess you could, you could say it's zero, but it's unknown. Only Chuck Norris can divide by zero, I believe, is what someone once told me. And then all I'm taking is this MPL, multiplying it by the price. So it would be 50, 100, 80, 70, and 20. Very simple math. This right here is that marginal benefit. And so that's a very simple way about how we can calculate MRPL using a table. 